one of the biggest questions in rise of kingdoms is what are the best commander pairs that you could possibly use in the game and if you ask 10 different people you'll probably get at least 10 different answers and really it comes down to this situation but i'm sure that there would be a way to sort of generally calculate what is technically the best commander setup or at least the top 10 best commanders in the game but also artificial intelligence right now is booming it is on the rise and i'm sure that you guys have seen AI generated artwork or maybe even AI generated articles or maybe even AI generated essays for a school project so what I wanted to know was can we use AI to generate the top 10 best commander pairs in rise of kingdoms so today that's what we're gonna do now really quick a lot of you guys seem to appreciate that I started drinking water again recently so let's make a deal okay you click that thumbs up button and I will hydrate like a healthy individual okay did you, did you click it did you click the button okay so here we are we are in the playground of open ai this is still in beta and i've been playing around with this for a couple of weeks now i created an account and whatnot but i created a little bit of a prompt here okay i said give me a list of the top 10 most powerful pairs of commanders in the mobile game rise of kingdoms for each item on your list explain why they are powerful in two to three sentences so this should give us an idea as to not only what pairs should we use but why are they good together and with that being said let's go ahead and click submit here and we'll see what is uh what is generated okay starting with pair number 10 we have none other than Charles Martel primary with Kusanoki secondary okay so we are not off to a great start but let's let's see what AI says why why is this a good commander pairing okay and I, I'm reading this straight off the page it says Charles Martel is a powerful commander for leading infantry troops and Kusanoki is a powerful commander for leading caval wait cav uh, cavalry troops okay this pair is perfect for leading large scale attacks as Charles Martel can keep Kusunoki's troops alive while they take down enemy forces okay okay so this so open AI was a little bit wrong okay they were a little bit wrong uh, Kusunoki is an archer commander okay but they were correct in identifying that they are two different commanders for two different troop types so they were almost correct there and they were right about Charles Mar Martel being an infantry commander and they were also correct about Charles Martel sort of being tanky right keeping Kusunoki alive while Kusunoki allegedly deals damage now would this commander pairing actually do well in the open field um no <laughs> okay obviously this is the answer is no if you were to use this pairing and, and i think that kusunoki being secondary is definitely the play here you would want to go all infantry the thing is like maybe in kvk1 if you were using sun tzu with somebody else then maybe you would actually want to have the aoe on kusunoki behind a tank okay you wanted to hide your kusunoki and he is dealing some aoe but also he's removing the debuffs on charles martel and this is actually a pretty unique active skill there's really not that many commanders in the game that can remove all these different debuffs and certainly uh kusunoki is the only one in the epic tier if i am uh, remembering correctly that can do something like this so i mean kusunoki is removing the debuffs from charles martel he's doing some aoe damage in the open field uh really not doing too much else but he does have sort of an instant proc two second damage factor so that's an, an additional 900 damage factor there that you might actually be uh be doing so i think it, you know it's fair to say that you'd be adding a little bit of damage to your charles martel and he sh he certainly would keep kusunoki alive but as far as the top 10 commander pairs in the game certainly this is uh this is not one of them moving on to pair number nine okay now i don't think i don't think ai has done this in uh in in a ranking in a tier list meaning number 10 is worse than number nine i don't think that that's what this is suggesting uh however we have number nine the primary commander for for pair number nine uh is tomo gozin probably pronounced that wrong i apologize and the secondary to tomo is kusunoki so okay so we're seeing kusunoki popping up again it looks like ai really love kusunoki I'm a little bit confused here okay but we have <laughs> we have Tomo primary again not off to a great start but let's see what they say about this pairing okay Tomo Gozen is a powerful commander for leading in okay infantry troops and and Kusunoki is a powerful commander for leading cavalry 
see this is okay so this is not this is a not true uh it says this pair is perfectly leading large-scale attacks as Tomo can keep Kusunoki's troops alive while they take that so that's the that's the same sentence they used for Charles Martel but unfortunately it actually apply, it works for Charles Martel does not work for Tomo there's really nothing that Tomo can do here to keep Kusunoki alive additionally this is not a great pair okay now Tomo is gorgeous love the artwork here right as just a commander but really kind of a trash commander uh and even if you were going to use her okay you would want to use her as the secondary commander it's literally in the third skill it says normal attacks gain an extra 20 rage when Tomo is serving as the secondary both commanders gain 15 percent increased skill damage okay so I mean as a secondary she's literally better okay also when Tomo uses her active skill you reduce the damage dealt by the target by 15 percent for two seconds very short debuff literally no expertise here on Tomo she also has the attack tree which honestly I didn't even know what trees she had because she's garbage she has versatility complete useless okay and her active skill just gives you 30 percent attack for three seconds like really not a good buff okay really not a good buff there's not much to like about Tomo and even if you did want to use her you would use her as secondary to Kusunoki to hide the fact that you are embarrassingly using a Tomo okay let's move on to pair number eight we have none other than Osman primary the secondary to Osman is uh El Cid we are back to using a legendary here okay so no blue commanders in this pairing definitely uh a better pairing I would say than the previous one here okay but, but Osman is a powerful commander for leading cavalry troops and El Cid is a powerful commander for leading infantry troops okay so that is also not true and I'm starting to think that the open AI has no idea how rise of kingdoms works and really this video idea was a stretch okay it was a stretch I was curious to know if if maybe possibly by some chance it could figure out enough about the game to give us some legitimate suggestions but it seems like that's not the case okay clearly Osman uh is a leadership commander he has nothing you know really no uh no specialties here so you could pair him with you could do whatever you want with him okay if you were gonna pair Osman with El Cid surely you would want El Cid to be primary because he's got the archer tree it's better than than leadership he also got the skill tree okay which is sick and in the early game it actually wouldn't be that bad if you did El Cid primary with Osman secondary you're gonna have a lot of single target damage coming from this March right a nice one second debuff on the active skill of El Cid thousand damage factor to one target pretty weak but he also has a 10 percent chance to deal an additional 1000 damage factor okay we have some defense some March speed here on El Cid which is going to be nice especially in the early game for archers and you have when you have less than 50 percent of your units remaining you gain 20 percent increased damage and 20 percent increased march speed there's also a little bit of extra damage and, and stats here on the expertise now if we come over and look at osman higher damage factor on the active skill so if you needed a reason to believe that el cid was trash here it is osman as an epic commander literally has a more powerful uh damage factor but also the sword of osman is an interesting skill it says after using an active skill deals an extra 400 damage factor to the target on the next turn so what's going to happen is you're going to deal a thousand damage factor from el cid then you'll deal 400 from osman sword of osman then you'll deal 1100 damage factor from osman then you'll deal another 400 damage factor from the third skill here so i mean you're, you're dealing some nice damage here you're going to bring more troops to the battlefield okay uh overall is this a great pairing not really but in the early game let's say you don't have YSG and you just want to do a ton of single target damage and bring as many troops to the battlefield as possible this could be an, a free to play option uh, if you had like maybe a 5511 L sit or something like that if you got really lucky in the early game but certainly uh not one of the best commander pairs in the game definitely not let's move on to pair number seven we have none other than E Song Ye okay so now we're talking Yi Song a primary questionable but okay good commander secondary is Pel Pelagius <clears throat> okay so that that de-escalated rather quickly we have Pelagius secondary to our YSG primary now here it says YSG is a powerful commander for leading infantry troops not true and Pelagius is a powerful commander for leading cavalry troops okay that's true okay so it it, it understands what, what Pelagius is doing I'm starting to to assume that maybe they're just guessing at this point okay but is this really a pair that you could use and realistically 
would it be better than the previous pair of El Cid Osman? I mean, here's the thing. Isong A primary, not a great choice, but again, maybe in the early game, you could justify that. Okay. Super, obviously super powerful AOE, circular, massive damage factor, 50% increase to skill damage. Okay. You have a rage engine. We've got the skill tree on YSG. So, okay. Um, also Pelagius secondary. Here's the thing. These are both garrison commanders. So what if the open AI was suggesting this as an early game garrison? That's not the worst. Thing. I mean, it's not great. Okay. It's not great, but if you've got nothing else, hear me out here. Okay. Hear me out. You got the YSG for the massive AOE that you're going to be dealing. And he has the garrison tree, which is great. Pelagius on the other hand is going to be dealing a lot of rage to the single target that's hitting you. And it's going to be giving you your own rage as well. Now you also have 7% increase attack for your garrison and watchtower, but watchtower is pretty much nothing. So there's that you have a little bit of healing factor, which maybe is not great on your wall. Okay. Probably not great on your wall, but you are gaining 30% of stats for your cavalry. And with your, with your YSG, you're going to be gaining, uh, the 10% chance of course of a hundred percent attack to archers, and you're going to get 10% more attack to your garrison. So again, great choice. Not really. Okay. But there I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure it's been done. I'm sure somebody has done this. Okay. They're again, they're both garrison commanders and, but by YSG buffing archers and Pelagius buffing cavalry, uh, you're, you're kind of buffing a little bit of everything in your city. Okay. Also your garrison is going to get 17% more attack, which applies to all troop types. So I mean, Hey, pre KVK one or wait, when do you get YSG? Do you get them before KVK one? I think you do. Uh, regardless possible. Someone could use this on their wall. It's questionable. It's questionable, but that's what I thought when that's the first thing I thought of. Okay. Next, let's take a look at commander uh, number six on the list. We have, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting, boys. Hold your breath. We have Genghis Khan primary, Hannibal Barca secondary. That is, that is what open AI is suggesting as, as the sixth most powerful commander pairing here in, in rise of kingdoms. Okay. So let's break this apart for a moment. Let's see if we can justify this pairing. Okay. Now Genghis Khan is infamous for two things. One, he has one of the lowest rage requirements in the entire game. It starts at 950. But you also can lower it by uh by a hundred with this second skill. So really it's 850, which is pretty insane. But also on the expertise, okay, you have a 30% chance to cast an additional chosen one active skill. Okay. Now here's the thing with with Khan. He has literally no stats for cavalry. He's giving you nothing. He's giving you no attack, no defense, no nothing. Okay. You're gaining 30% increased damage, which, Hey, that's great, but it's only when you have more than 70% of units remaining. So once you go below that 70% mark, your damage falls off a cliff. Also, when you're getting hit, you're going to get slowed, right? You're going to get slowed here, which is insane. Cause he's a glass cannon and he slows himself down, which is ridiculous. But anyway, what happens if we pair him with Barca? Okay. What if we pair him with Barca? He's got a small damage factor with a little bit of a three target AOE here. Okay. 25% damage and defense reduction for five seconds really powerful debuff by the way on this active skill from barca and you don't even have to expertise him to get it all the way up but the thing is there's a little bit of anti-synergy here because barca as as a leadership commander wants multiple troop types um and if you look at genghis khan the third skill says when troops of this commander consist of only cavalry so really you have to only use cavalry even for the fourth skill you have to use all calves so not really great synergy here. You're not going to get any of the bonuses on the second skill. However, okay. You are going to get 15% bonus damage outside of your territory and you're going to bring more caps to the battlefield. I mean, it's a stretch. Okay. This is a, this is a big stretch. Of course, this is something that you could only even consider in the super early game. I mean, really the only reason that I can think of that you would use this March is for you to sort of rapid fire, apply the debuffs from the active skill on Barca, right? Because this is a really powerful debuff. It, it really is. And if you use Genghis Khan primary, where the, where is he? You're going to pop off that skill pretty quick. Okay. So you could pop out of your city, hit him with the active skill from Khan, hit him with the debuff from Barca. Maybe you get to pop him again with the, with the expertise. And then you run back to your city. That's the only way I could see this pairing actually working and doing something interesting in the open field. It's like a glass cannon cheeseburger march. You just pop out, hit them, 
debuff for five seconds pop back in that's that's pretty much it uh other than that this this pairing is garbage um this may change if and when Genghis Khan gets a relic okay when Khan's relic comes into the game maybe it's gonna be like Minamoto's relic okay maybe it's gonna give you an insane amount of cav stats and that's gonna be broken who knows but uh until then Khan pretty much trash Barka absolutely trash not a good pairing okay let's move on to pairing number five we have now hear me out we got Kusunoki okay, okay he's back your boy is back we we got Kusunoki primary and Joan of Arc secondary. So this is apparently the fifth best commander pairing in the game, by the way, in case you were, in case you lost track here. So Kusunoki primary and Joan of Arc secondary. Now it doesn't say whether it's Joan of Arc or Joan of Arc prime based on the data that this is pulling. I don't think that this open AI is using data from 2022. So it's safe to assume that Joan of Arc prime did not exist during in, in the data set that this is pulling from but let's let's play around with this okay so kusunoki primary joan of arc secondary it says kusunoki is a powerful commander for leading infantry troops literally not true while joan of arc is a powerful commander for leading mounted troops literally don't know what that means mounted troops. do they mean do they mean cavalry is that what integration means does integration mean you're ma you're mounted you, you've integrated the mount i don't know I don't know. Um, certainly, uh, if you were to pair these two commanders together, you would definitely want Kusunoki primary because you get the skill tree and the archer tree. You would do all archers for this as well. Honestly, Joan of Arc kind of fits in with anybody, depending on what exactly you're trying to do. Now, Joan of Arc obviously gets a ton of, a ton of stats with the buff here. Insane, right? Insane. You get a little bit of feeling factor and the normal attack damage is sort of through the roof with, with Joan of Arc because of this 25%, which is huge. Okay. Really, if you have Joan, you want to hide her behind somebody that's maybe a little bit tanky or less of a target that's, you know, you don't really want to hit it or something like that. Like if you did like a Bacall Joan of Arc, people probably wouldn't even notice for a while that there's a Joan behind it because they're not even going to bother hitting it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, who's Kusunoki primary small damage factor removes the debuffs a little bit of an AOE okay you get the archer stats and uh you know you a little bit of extra damage factor to one target but honestly this is not not great okay it's not great if you were going to pair these commanders together what I would suggest instead would be sort of like a Joan of Arc prime right like if, if let's say let's say it did mean Joan of Arc prime you could do Joan of Arc prime with Kusunoki secondary and would that be a good pairing nope definitely not okay but it would be better than the epic pairing and you would do in that instance all calves and the only reason that you would be bringing Kusunoki would be for a little bit of AOE and removing all the debuffs from Joan that would literally be it you would just have Joan of Arc firing off her active skill doing all all this good stuff that she does and you would have Kusunoki behind her basically with a paintball gun okay just dealing a tiny bit of damage to people around but the biggest thing he would be doing would be removing all the debuffs from Joe. you basically just make sure that she's healthy and, and active and pop it off and dealing some extra damage when he can that's pretty much all he would be doing back there and that's pretty much it so overall trash pairing pairing number four we have none other than Boudica, which for the same reason as Joan I assume is the epic version and oh god Minamoto again Boudica primary in this instance really doesn't make any sense um but it says that Boudica is a powerful commander for leading infantry troops nope while Minamoto is a powerful leader for uh mounted troops so okay that is I mean if mounted troops means calves then that's true okay so open AI knows that Minamoto is a calf commander that's great in this scenario surely you would not use Minamoto uh, as the secondary you would absolutely want to use Minamoto primary put Boudica behind him to hide the fact that you're embarrassingly using a Boudica okay now what would this pairing actually accomplish well the first thing off the top of my head is that you are cha uh, killing barbs are you doing a barb fort rally if you're in the early game at the very beginning of the game and you have no other choices and you don't have Tao Tao or whatever then okay maybe you could justify using a Minamoto primary with a Boudica secondary okay they both have the peacekeeping tree they're dealing extra damage to uh to the pve okay bonus damage to barbs as well um you're gonna gain more experience with, with minamoto so if you're leveling up your minamoto maybe you would want to do something like this okay but let's 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 look at this from a pvp scenario okay let's look at minamoto he's got absolutely ridiculous single target damage we obviously we know that also on his fourth skill he has a 10 percent chance to increase the damage taken by the target by 30 percent for three seconds that's huge okay that's a really powerful debuff it's a five second cooldown we actually we really like minamoto for the single target damage um he also gains 20 percent attack 10 percent march speed and don't forget uh he does have a relic here okay now we haven't really talked much about relics in this video so far because most of these pairings really you would only even ever consider them in the very 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 early game but it is at least worth noting that 
you get 45 percent of stats with this relic which is a it's huge that's a huge amount of stats for a relic it's uh, it's unprecedented i would even argue okay so you would go all calves obviously with minamoto primary for pve you would do uh you know skill tree cav tree that the, the same basic stuff and you'd be dealing a ton of single target damage Boudica, on the other hand would also be hitting them with a thousand damage factor which again that's the same as El Cid. in fact this is a better than El Cid because it's a 100 rage reduction that's solid reducing the enemy rage is solid and it's a 25 percent attack debuff so overall solid stuff here when you use a skill you gain 50 rage so a little bit of her own rage engine built in with a healing factor and this last skill is not that great, but there's a 10% chance to increase basically all damage for one turn, whether it's by 50, 100, 150%. Again, this as a single pairing, not great. If you're going to do it, it's going to be in the early game, probably before there's a relic and it's probably best for PVE. Okay. We're moving on to the top three. Now we're moving on to the top three. Number three on the list is Cao Cao primary with Sun Jian as secondary so Sun Jian is not a commander uh in rise of kingdoms however it is a playable character in dynasty warriors apparently Sun Jian was a Chinese military general politician and warlord who lived during the late Eastern Han dynasty of China we even have a nice little picture of Sun Jian over here okay now unless open AI knows something that I don't this commander does not exist this is not a commander in rise of kingdoms so I don't know if pairing three is just a wash I mean here it says Cao Cao is a powerful commander for leading infantry wrong and Sun Jian is a powerful commander leading cavalry that I don't even know it doesn't even make sense okay now here's inter something interesting if Sun Jian comes into the game as a cavalry commander you heard it here first okay open AI predicted Sun Jian being a, a cavalry commander in the future whether that happens or not I have no idea my assumption is that it's a mistake let's assume for the sake of this video that it, it meant Sun Tzu maybe it meant Sun Tzu I, I really have no idea okay it's the closest thing that that I can that I can assume even though Sun Tzu is not a cavalry commander it's sort of the only thing that even remotely makes sense here so if you did it at Cao Cao primary Sun Tzu secondary what would be the outcome here okay first of all obviously you would do all calves you get a ton of bonus uh stats here cavalry attack here and on the expertise you also get a healing factor and some extra rage which is nice some March speed huge single target damage factor with an attack reduction and it slows the target now the cool thing about Sun Tzu he really doesn't care about troop type that much and you could easily justify slapping him behind pretty much anybody in the early game to give them a, a powerful AoE and a rage engine as well which is huge and 20 percent bonus skill damage it is really good okay plus no matter what troop type it is they take 10 percent less damage which is actually good for Cao Cao because he's a glass cannon we know that so this I mean this would be sort of the fastest Sun Tzu you've ever seen in your life okay because uh, Cao Cao has got the mobility tree you would use this uh mainly to get in there hit a, a quick AoE boom 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 you get out okay you get out that's what Cao Cao would be doing here with the Sun Tzu and also you'd be dealing 20 percent more damage with this single target from Sun Tzu it's an interesting combo it's something that you could attempt would I recommend it no certainly if you ever did this it would be early game and you have better options for both these commanders in the early game even still so maybe maybe when Sun Jiang comes into the game it, this will be the best pairing ever uh but I don't I don't really know what to say okay moving on to the second best commander pair in the game according to artificial intelligence uh we have Sun Tzu primary okay so that kind of pokes a hole in my previous in my previous argument I assumed maybe they meant Sun Tzu but here this this shows that they actually know what Sun Tzu is so that they probably didn't confuse Sun Tzu and Sun Jian I guess maybe Sun Jian is coming okay maybe they know something I don't it's it's artificial intelligence for, for the record so it, it's intelligent smarter than me maybe although these pairings are questionable but anyway we have Sun Tzu primary secondary is uh Good chief. it's your boy the second best pair in the game that is what artificial intelligence suggests so it's wrong um I can't even I can't even think I mean look okay if you were gonna the only way that you would do this would be would be barb chaining in the very beginning of the game that's the only way and you would use lohar primary because you're never you're never gonna use lohar in pvp okay the damage factor is pathetic you healing very small healing factor this does nothing in pvp this does nothing in pvp this is a huge healing factor when you leave battle but it's 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 nothing lohar is doing nothing for pvp okay he's giving you no stats he's trash so if you did this pvp this would be embarrassing you would get made fun of ridiculed likely bullied and potentially kicked out of your alliance okay but but what if we're talking about pve okay 
you could do lohar primary all right and then you could do sun Tzu secondary and he's got some nice aoe very beginning of the game you get free barb hits with the aoe chaining okay you could do some barb chaining here with sun Tzu. Uh, and you know, he's going to provide a little bit of tankiness to your lower heart, keep him alive for a while, deal a little bit more skill damage. Okay. And that's pretty much it. That's like the only, the only scenario where you would ever legitimately see a lower Sun Tzu. Certainly not the second best commander in the game. Yeah. There's really nothing I can say about that. It's just, it's just atrocious. It's not, it's nothing. I mean, you really like you would only use this when you're leveling up your Sun Tzu. Like that's, that's pretty much it. Like you're leveling up Sun Tzu. That's the only time you're going to do this pairing. Moving on to the best commander pairing in the game. This is, this is artificial intelligence at its finest. This is the most powerful commander pairing in rise of kingdoms. According to artificial intelligence, we have Theodora primary off to a great start and wait for it. Belisarius secondary. That's it, boys and girls. We have successfully harnessed the most powerful artificial intelligence module in the world to reach the conclusion that scientifically it is true that of course, uh, and I, I can't believe we missed this, that Theodore primary with Belisarius secondary is the most powerful commander pairing in all of rise of kingdoms new meta new meta discovered on the omniarch youtube channel theodore primary belisaria secondary when on earth would you ever use this i have no idea let's let's see if we could salvage this for just a second okay theodore has got a circular aoe it's pretty good it's not it's not ysg but you don't even have to expertise her to get it so okay that's fine two of these skills are for garrison only and belisaris in your garrison not great okay uh the, however the expertise here does turn this into the same circle as as ysg i think it's a little bit smaller if i remember correctly but it's still good 700 damage factor okay and you're removing everything all the all the debuffs and all that stuff solid things okay solid stuff here we like to see that you get 10 percent increased attack 10 percent increased damage over 50 percent so okay what are we doing here with belisarius all right nice debuff on the active skill only two seconds but it's it's solid a little bit of damage factor there bonus da damage to barbs halves get 30 percent defense we'd like to see that and 50 percent march speed when leaving battle pretty good for running away from the enemy okay 25 percent increased damage when the enemy is under 50 percent huge and that's and that's pretty much it so okay when would you ever do this never you, I mean, really, you would never do this, okay? Maybe you could make the argument that you could cheeseburger with this march. Hear me out. Belisarius primary, Theodore secondary, with the mobility tree. If you see someone in your city who's under 50%, you pop out, you hit them with this march. What this is going to do is it's going to give you 25% bonus damage to that enemy, and you'll have the circular AoE, okay? from uh theodora plus the bonus to attack that's gonna hit them with the powerful a i don't know i don't know i'm i'm reaching at this point there's really no the only really if i'm being honest with you guys the only time you'd ever use this is for barb chaining okay if for whatever reason you skipped ysg and you went all in on theodora okay or even like a 5111 theodora for whatever and you and you wanted to do do that okay you could do that belisar is primary Theodora secondary. She has the circular AOE. You could chain with this March. That's really the only time you would ever do this. And again, you would need Belisarius primary, not Theodora primary, like the open AI is, uh, is suggesting. So really as the best pair in the game, why I got gloves on my boy. What are, what do we do with the gloves on this boy? I have no clue. I don't even, I forgot I even had that. Okay. Well, anyway, this pairing, I mean, honestly for, for a barb chaining pair, it's actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you because Theodora doesn't need that many sculptures to get the circular. We, you could actually do like a, a one, 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 uh, Theodora, and you could chain with that pretty much. If you had a, a tanky enough yeah. primary, right? The damage factor here, 600 is not great, but for zero sculpture investment it's circular aoe it's 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 free chaining that's pretty much what it is you would just have to somehow unlock her for free i guess i don't know anyway um apparently that's the best commander pairing in the game guys if you found this video interesting or entertaining or funny or whatever i hope you would drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it kind of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it of course while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video it just takes one second and it really helps out the channel a ton absolutely free you can unsub later even if you don't like the content comment down below what your thoughts are on these artificial intelligence generated armies i would love i would love to hear from you guys with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace